Now, many of us, we can have different uh, ways of relating to God. Some of us relate to God as a, as a heavy-handed father, uh, somebody who's always angry with us, somebody who's always, you know, wanting to correct us or whatever it might be, and so we have that view of God. Other people have a view of God that he's somebody who forgives the sins that you always have that you can never get away from and that you're always bound up by these sins and that, that, that we view God as this, this person up there in heaven who just is always washing away your sins, but he's always looking at you and he's always the one on the cross for you. And he is that. And then other people view God as, as the beautiful father that he is. And, uh, and, and, the, and the beauty that's in his heart, the love that is in his heart for each one of us. David, King David, in Psalm 27 and verse 4, he, he says this, One thing I have desired. He said, there's one thing that I want to do in life. In fact, I want to do it all the days of my life, it says. And that is to behold the beauty of the Lord. I just want to see God. I just want to look upon his face, and I want to just behold his beauty. In Psalm 37, uh, David also writes this. He says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? You, you, you have, you're fond of the Lord. You delight yourself in, in him. You want to be where he is. You want to have fellowship with him, delighting yourself in the Lord. And then point B here, it, it speaks about being, transform, being transformed. I mean, you know that in, in Romans chapter 12, the apostle, he talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, all the thoughts that you have in your mind uh, that are your thoughts, that are just on uh, your thoughts on your own, letting those thoughts become transformed by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Um, it says here, if we can see what Paul saw about Jesus, then we can respond to him like Paul did in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. Paul the Apostle, he says, I, I also count all things loss for the excellence, for the beauty, the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. He says, all of these things that I've gained in life, all of these things that I've worked for, all these things that I've gone to school for, because Paul was uh, one uh, of the Sanhedrin, one of the leaders of, of the Old Testament um, uh, leadership, all these things that I've done, I count it all loss. Some translations uh, say, uh, use the word, I count it all rubbish. It's all a waste of time that I might gain uh, the, the, the excellence. Uh, I, I count it all lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, just to know Jesus and to know the Lord and to, and to peer into his face. Paul also, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, he says, we all, talking about all of us, beholding the glory or the, the beauty of, of the Lord, are, we're being transformed into his image from glory to glory. How many know that when you, when you look into the Lord's face and God transforms you, when you take time to look upon God, it, there's an old saying that says, uh, the, the whole, beholding is becoming. What you look at is what you become. How many know that's true? And so the beholding and the becoming principle says this, that when you look upon the Lord, and you do it on a regular basis, then he transforms you into his very image. And that is what we want to see happen in each one of our lives. And so David had a determination to see God's uh, uh, beauty uh, face to face. Let's look at point C. It says, delighting in the beauty of Jesus is essential to walking in victory. You cannot be victorious in your life unless uh, unless you delight in the beauty of Jesus. You can't be victorious. You can't be an overcomer on the, unless you decide that you want to delight in the beauty of fellowshipping with the Lord. Especially, it says here, in this hour when fear, lust, offense, rejection, and violence are increasing. 
David wrote Psalm 27 in a time of conflict. He was attacked by many enemies and tempted with fear, bitterness, and despair. I mean, you know that people, you know, can, can bum you out, as we used to say back in the old days, right? Or somebody else said, I, I love, uh, you know, doing the work of the ministry if it wasn't for all the people. I mean, you know, people can get you down, right? And, and can get you depressed and discouraged and so forth. And so don't look to people. Don't look upon people. Don't expect them to fix your problems because no person can fix your problem. Only God can. And only his grace and mercy can help you in that way. And it says here in Psalm 27, verses 2 through 4, When the wicked come against me, though an army may encamp against me, I mean, he's ever had armies encamp against you. Maybe not like David did, like King David did, but sometimes people come against us. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. One thing I have desired, again, he says this, to behold the beauty of the Lord. That's just the one thing I want to do. One of the conferences that we've been to many years uh, over the years is called the One Thing Conference. And uh, every year, uh, December 28th through the 31st in Kansas City, Missouri, the, the House of Prayer, the IHOP in Kansas City, puts on the One Thing Conference. And it's just a wonderful time to be there with usually around 25,000 young people or people from all over the world, not just from America, but from all over, from many different nations, especially a lot of Asian people come and a lot of Europe, uh, from Europe and, and other uh, locations of the world. They come to be a part of the One Thing Conference. And, that, and this verse right here is what it's talking about. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And I'm going to do that one thing for four days. Getting up early in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. Oh, I'm tired. No, you're not. <laughs> right? I remember years ago when we would take teams up there and we would send some of these young people out to uh, make sure that we could get seats in a 25,000 seat auditorium. And so we'd make them go at like 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> yes, I know they wanted to, but right. But they would go at 6.30 in the morning just to make sure that they could get seats because you couldn't save them from, from the night till the next day. Because they had a desire, they had a heart after God. They, they wanted the one thing uh, is to, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Point D says Isaiah prophesied that the Spirit would emphasize King Jesus' beauty in, in uh, chapter 33 in the generation of his return. And that God's people will find stability and strength by delighting in his beauty. Again, we want to just reemphasize this truth. Not just to be saved, not just to, you know, be a part of the family of God, but actually to delight and to behold the beauty of the Lord. Um, point E says beauty. Uh, someone uh, famous says that. I, I'm not even going to try to say this person's name. Beauty is, is the battlefield where God and Satan contend for the hearts of men. Anybody want to try to say that name right there? Ooh, oh, my goodness. That is enough to make a Danish person crazy. Um, <coughs> now, how many know that's true? Beauty is the battlefield where God and Satan contend for the hearts of men. I mean, we see that today just in, in, in Hollywood and in what's happening in our culture and the, the, the makeup industry and all these things. Everybody wants to be beautiful. Everybody wants to, to look beautiful, and, and this is the battlefield of light and darkness and where the, where, the, where the battle rages. Point F says, God's beauty, his glory, his majesty speaks of all that is attractive about him. It includes how he thinks and feels, how he do, uh, uh, what he does, how he looks, and the power and knowledge that he possesses. His beauty is displayed in his creation, redemption, leadership, and even how he designed humans uh, to interact. God made everything. How many know that's true? How many know that this week John Glenn, the astronaut, passed away? How many know that he saw the beauty of the Lord as he went out into space and looked out 
you know, the, the capsule uh, window and saw, you know, so many beautiful things on the outside. Even <clears throat> when they landed on the, mu- on the, on the, moon, on the moon, um, um, do you remember back then, in, uh, when was that, 1971 or something like that? 69? <laughs> I remember the night. I remember when uh, they landed on the moon. Um, I was, you know, in, in junior high, I think. I, I was not even in high school yet. Um, but I remember uh, many would put out posters that we would hang up that had a picture of Earth, and it would say, in the beginning, dot, dot, dot. It would just create this amazing awe in the hearts of people as we actually landed on the moon, and actually we did some of these things, and I know the astronauts were just blown away by the experience of seeing the creation of God and how awesome God is. Now, how many know we're not to, to worship creation? Right? We're not to bow down to a stone or to an idol or to anything else, any other created thing. We can look at it and we can glorify Jesus for his creation. I do that every time when I look on my wife. You know, she's beautiful. And I say, praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> Just joking. No, I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> I am actually serious. I'm not joking. And it says... Um, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. In other words, as you look into the Lord and into creation and into everything that God has created, the amazing earth that God has created, we see the beauty of God. Look at point G. We can see God's beauty in creation and many aspects of human life and interaction. For example, in sights and sounds, in colors, in brilliance, uh, brilliance, in hues, in melody, in pitch, in rhythm, in harmony. I believe it pleases the heart of God as the worship teams worship the Lord and sing unto the Lord and melody comes out of their mouth and out of their instruments. Why do we do that? Because God is worthy and we worship him in that way with sights and with sounds. In, how about fragrances and fragrances of flowers, spices, costly perfumes ladies how many of you like some costly perfumes sometimes right come on now be honest um but just beautiful fragrances how about in knowledge it says stimulating the mind with mathematics science medicine technology as you look into some of the things i mean some of the tv shows today do a good job capturing as some of the stuff that's been created and, 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 and understood through knowledge. But, it, but God is the one who gives the knowledge to man to be able to do these things. The, it says here in life stories, stimulating the heart with biographies, novels, dramas, movies, in, in noble character, acts of courage, generosity, compassion, perseverance, faithfulness. I love watching shows that have those kinds of, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, characteristics it, with, uh, woven within the show itself. I mean, I love it, I, you know, as, as a strong man that I am, but I love my emotions just being moved upon to see those actions of people when they show, you know, courage or when they... Uh, Show when they do something compassionate for somebody else who doesn't deserve it or, or they have a heart of mercy or they overlook somebody's fault or whatever it might be. When you, when, when you see it acted out, it's like, oh, my gosh, my heart is just gripped by that. God is behind that, I believe. The Lord is the one who's behind it. It's part of the beauty of God. How many know it's part of the beauty of God when you forgive somebody? Somebody who should be punished or somebody that really is in the wrong and you decide because of God's grace in your heart, you decide to forgive them and let them go. And just because of the mercy of the Lord that you extend that to them. Those are characteristics that are very, very noble. Um, How about uh, human abilities? Singers, we talked about that for just a moment. Musicians, athletes. Writers, artists, composers, producers, people who have giftings and and abilities to do things. I believe God is behind all of that. He's given you that ability. 
If the Lord has given you that ability, take it and run with it and do the best you can for the Lord. Uh, in society, where it says when justice prevails and reconciliation occurs between races and nations, that's part of the beauty of the Lord. I know that many are, are praying right now and, and, and asking God and believing that in this next season that we'll see much of that take place. Nations being realigned, peoples being brought back together, healing coming between races and things happening in a very, very supernatural way because of the beauty of the Lord, because of who God is, because of his desire. Flip your page over and look at, um, it says here, God's beauty seen in creation. God, God is beauty itself. All the beauty that we see in this world is a dim reflection of the sources of ultimate beauty, who is God. David exhorted us to look up and see a beauty in the heavenly art gallery. In Psalm 19 and verse 1, he says, The heaven declare the glory of, the, of God, and the firmament sh uh, shows his handiwork. That word declare means, literally means that the heavens are screaming the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> I remember as a young man, newly saved, coming home, you know, late at night, we're all out, we're pr praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord and going to coffee houses late into the night. Back then they had coffee, they were different coffee houses, not like today, uh, but places where you could go and just worship the Lord all night. And the coffee was nothing like you drink today. It was a little percolator. <laughs> what was that? West Bend percolator over there in the corner. It had been sitting there for hours and it was the nastiest stuff you've ever had but we just enjoyed sitting together on the floor usually just worshiping the Lord till 12 o'clock till one o'clock in the morning and then we'd go out and witness and share Christ with people out on the streets you know people that were going in and out of bars back this is back in Texas many years ago and then we'd get home at you know two two o'clock three o'clock in the morning after uh, after spending uh, eating a meal at Denny's I remember We'd all go to Denny's and there'd be like 12, 15 of us sitting around a big table and nobody had any money back then. We're just young people, you know, and we'd all just order. It was a tradition. We'd, we'd all just order. What do you want? I, I want a hamburger and fries. Okay, let's just trust the Lord, <laughs> right? And, and then we'd eat the meal and then uh, we'd pass a bucket around. We need like $27 for everybody, you know. Well, we only got 18 bucks. What are we going to do? I don't know, but we got to put a tip in there too. Pass it around again, you know, and somebody else will throw in a couple of bucks. It was crazy. We never left without paying for the meal, though. <laughs> that was fun. And then getting home, getting dropped off, and I remember sitting outside my parents' house and just looking up into the heavens, and you could see the expanse of the stars and the moon and all the planets. Not all the planets, but whatever planets, you know. You could just go, wow, that's amazing. My, my father created this. What an awesome God. Praise the Lord. I'd sit there for like 15 minutes and just worship the Lord. Because it was so amazing. I mean, you know, that's part of the beauty of God. It's part of who he is. Look at some of the, some of the background information of just creation. It says light travels at 186 thousand miles per second that's six trillion miles per year how many you know that's a long that's fast right <coughs> after the sun the nearest star to us is somebody say that word right there Prox, proxima i bet you've studied that in school right it is 25 trillion miles four light years from the earth the pistol star releases 10 million times the power of our sun, unleashing as much light in 20 seconds as our sun does in a year. I mean, think about these realities. Here we are sitting on this little planet Earth, saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, to a God who created all of this, this huge, beautiful, amazing creation. The Milky Way, it says here, point three, the Milky Way galaxy contains over 100 billion stars and 100,000 light years in diameter. I, don't, I can't even think about that. Astronomers estimate that there are over 100 billion galaxies, each having billions of stars. 
The closest galaxy to the Milky Way is Androm uh, Andromeda. <coughs> it is over 2 million light years from the Earth. 15 quintillion miles. How many, how many know that's more than your Toyota can do? Right? 15 with, that is 15 with 18 zeros. <coughs> One galaxy is over 10 billion light years from the Earth. <coughs> Pardon me. And so, we want to grow in our ability to delight in God's beauty. We grow in our delight of His beauty by meditating on, by blessing, <clears throat> by praising, declaring, by sharing it. Psalm 145 says, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, on your beauty, Lord. I will meditate on it. I will think about it. I will declare your greatness. Your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. Again, King David writing these words. And, and so as we verbalize what we see about God's beauty, our insight and delight increase we receive more from the spirit as we declare god's beauty in worship and we share it with others that's why we love in in this house of prayer we just love to worship the lord we just love to praise god we just love to sing about the beauty of the lord oh to look into his face oh to behold him oh to be drawn closer to him to 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 look into his eyes it, it just it, it it evokes this a grateful heart, this grateful outpouring of our hearts unto the Lord. And so how do we grow in our ability to delight in God's beauty? We meditate on God. It says here, we search out and we think deeply on who he is and what he has done. We meditate on him. Psalm chapter 1 speaks about how blessed the person is who meditates on the Lord, who thinks about God, who looks upon him. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 talks about how that we're to meditate in the word of the Lord, how we're to meditate on the word of God. And when you meditate on God's word, you will be prosperous and successful, it says in Joshua chapter 1. And so we meditate on God. We think about him constantly. Don't let your mind drift away. Don't let your mind be uh, uh, captivated by worries and by problems and by people and by just other things. But make sure that every, every, every moment, every day, every week, you have time to just meditate on the Lord. Secondly, we bless, we praise God, we worship Him. We speak of what we see back to God with gratitude and delight. We say to the Lord, God, thank you for uh, meeting that need. Thank you, Lord, for making a way within that situation. Thank you for healing that person that we prayed for. Thank you, Lord, for touching that young person that the man asked for prayer for his daughter, and God, you touched her heart, and something happened, and a door was open. Thank you, Lord. Just remembering those kinds of, of things and blessing God in those things. Number three, declaring and sharing with other people, sharing what we admire about God so others can delight in him. I believe that so many people today, there, there are many people who don't know God, don't like Christians, don't want anything to do with Christians, but I also believe this. I don't think they've ever really experienced what it's like to meet somebody who really loves the Lord and who's filled with the mercy and grace and power of God. Because how many know those are just amazing people, right? Because they're looking into the eyes of the Lord. And so we want to declare who God is to other people. I want to encourage you to do that this Christmas season. You may come in contact with a lot of people who are just broken people, who are upset people, who don't have anything to rejoice about. And you be a light to them. You be the Lord to them. You love them. You show grace to them. You do something nice for them and see what will happen in their lives. Point B says, uh, quote by C.S. Lewis, we delight to praise 
what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. It completes the enjoyment. Point C, God is glorified when we discern and delight in his beauty. We glorify and magnify God by treasuring, celebrating, and making much of his name and his beauty. I want you to celebrate the Lord this Christmas season. Celebrate him. Oh, hallelujah. Joy to the world. Right? When you're singing at Publix and doing some hymns or some Christmas carols, and you're singing joy to the world, it's not just a song on a sheet of paper. It is something that's just beaming out of you. Silent night, holy night. I mean, as you're standing there, people will stop and take notice. God is in you, and you have seen him, and he has captivated your heart, and he has changed your life. What a powerful idea. And so, declare it to other people. Paul um, patiently, persistently prayed for others to receive greater insight into the beauty of God. He prayed this in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. He said that the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know him and that you may know the power of his resurrection. That God would begin to open your eyes and you would see things that you've not seen before. And lastly, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 4 says, If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will find the knowledge of God. You will find God's beauty. You will see him if you pursue, pursue the Lord, if you run after him with all of your heart. And I want to encourage us to do that. Worship team, I want you to go ahead and come on up. I want to encourage us to do that in this season that we are uh, in right now, known as Christmas season. Lord, we love you. We thank you. <clears throat> we thank you for who you are. We delight in you, Lord. We delight ourselves in you. We want to worship you, Lord, all the days of our life. God, we were made to worship you. And Lord, I just pray that the reality of who you are, the beauty of God, the beauty of your heart, Lord, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, Lord, the wonder of all of creation that you have created, Lord, even as we look with our natural eyes at the universe that you've made, as we look with our natural eyes at all the things surrounding us, Lord, the beauty of sights and sound and smells and knowledge, Lord, and, and just character traits of people who are just amazing people and gifted people and artists, Lord. God, as we look at all of those things, Lord, the sum of it all, God, is just saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We love you. We worship you. You're creator of all of these things, Lord, and you deserve our glory. So, Lord, tonight we just love you and we bless you, Lord. We just thank you for this special evening, Lord. We thank you for your word that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I just want to invite you to uh, go ahead and stand up. We're going to worship the Lord before we go tonight. Let's just let's sing our praises unto the Lord.